Welcome hunters. My name is David Tavares. I'm the lead game designer for Occupational Hazard LLC and this is my virtual avatar. Today I'd like to discuss some Hunter the Reckoning news. Uh, they've had a blog come out as long as with um, two uh, teaser uh, snippets from the book um, and we've seen some more episodes of the day shift uh, on the Renegade uh, channel, so I'll discuss uh, all of those things. Uh, let's start here with the Hunter of the Reckoning first look at the new edition. Um, actually, I'll just read this part because it's not very long. Humanity clings to a comfortable illusion that the world belongs to mankind, that they lead lives free-willed individuality, completely unaware that they occupy a world of grim mysteries inhabited by monsters. Those savvy to the secret of the world of darkness know the truth, however. That timeless blood drinkers, ravening shapeshifters, restless ghosts, and even more harrowing things haunt the night. Hunters are among those who have seen past the veil of secrecy and know the world for what it is. A bauble in the claw of monsters. Hunters fight back against the threat because they have a glimpse of the truth and have resolved to do something about it. There's some more nice art here. Hunters form their own cells with other hunters for protection and advantage in numbers, hopefully. Think of cells as hunter startups. The players' characters bring specialized edges into their own unique cells, which are likely cosmopolitan in makeup with hunters from a variety of ideologies known as creeds. Creeds shape how the hunter approaches their supernatural quarry. From the outlook, they suppose uh, they suppose to use the tools they provide. As well, they provide a social component to what might otherwise be a bleak and lonely road. If nothing else, one can look to others of one's creed for a common take on the monster-infested world and how and why to take a f to affect change. One risk of being a hunter is the consuming nature of the hunt, of perseverance in the face of not just adver adversary but danger. Adversity, sorry. Uh, drive enables the hunter to push themselves beyond the limits of those without it. But drive also tempers the hunter to keep going. The more they learn, the closer they'll, they're pulled into the proximity of the very thing they pursue, even when the wisest course is to dr withdraw and reconsider the plan. The counterpart of drive is desperation. The intense urgency that prompts the cells of hunters to do something now before it's too late. Players always choose when to engage their hunter's drive because there's risk involved, but desperation grows as threat mounts in a number of ways. The player protagonists of Hunter the Reckoning are philosophically and mechanically different from organized hunter antagonists like the FBI Special Affairs Division and the Society of Leop St. Leopold by dint of their drives. Other hunters take orders, but Hunter the Reckoning characters make their own way following their drives. Um, what they just mentioned there, uh, uh, the SAD, the Special Affairs Division, and Society of Leopold, uh, those were fully detailed in the Second Inquisition book for Vampire, the V5. Um, and there, there was a decent amount of information in them in the Camarilla book as well. Um, which I thought was an interesting placement of that information. Uh, but there's there's uh, a whole book in for Vampire dedicated to them. I'm wondering whether there's going to be a werewolf version of the organizations, um, if there's going to be Second Inquisition Werewolf, or if you're just supposed to use the Second Inquisition Vampire book um, to uh, reference the orgs. Um, although the, the, the Vampire book um, clearly had a lot of like relics and sci uh, science uh, technologies, devices, uh, that were aimed at vampires, not necessarily werewolves. So, um, there could there could barely very well be a room for supplement uh, supplementing for werewolves here. Uh, and I'll continue. As well, hunters generally consider the most formal orgs to be ethically compromised or corrupt. Many of the orgs have ulterior motives beyond the actual hunt. At best, hunters might take a trip or a contract from an org, knowing that the org has an agenda behind the cooperation. At worst, the orgs are actively working against the hunters, perhaps using them to reveal unknown supernatural threats or even 
using the hunt as an opportunity to eliminate what they see as rogue elements. Um, as generally uh, uh, human characters, uh, um, it seems like the orcs are willing to um, toy with the idea of, of uh, using hunters. Um, but I, I think as are these orgs, as they call them, are, are going to experience more and more supernatural creatures as they see the werewolves, as they see uh, maybe what else, whatever is next, wraiths or changelings or mages, um, uh, they're, they're probably going to resort to tactics of pitting them against each other. But right now, uh, they'll clearly be able to pit uh, a reckoning style hunters against uh, any threat uh, to you know save resources. That's important. The players' characters have drives, creeds, and edges. The vast majority of hunters in the orgs, and even many lone hunters themselves, do not. The ultimate hunter intention in this regard is to get shit done. Unburdened by the ethically compromised agendas of the orgs, hunter cells have the advantage of operating with an integrity and independence that the larger and more structured orgs can't. That means that the orcs themselves often function as antagonists in Hunter's World of Darkness or as entities that otherwise illustrate a number of Hunter themes. For example, Hunters might have contacts in the orcs who feed them information here and there. But it's just as likely that they're using the Hunters as bait to flush out the nest of unusual threats they've been monitoring for three months. Um, in the uh, Second Inquisition book, it does talk about... Um, vampires that work within the second inquisition like uh thin bloods or um uh whites that were captured to be used as weapons or you know um people that were already second inquisition that were turned into vampires and are using whatever powers they can to uh help the second inquisition sort of just burn out and die uh uh which you know the hunter life is short so um, I, I think it's interesting that there's a lot of parallels uh, here between what they're calling the orgs and these reckoning hunters. Um, rather than spacing them apart, I know in prior editions there, um, uh, I, I saw a little bit more space between like uh, what they called imbued hunters and uh, other styles of hunters. The Society of Leopold is in prior editions, for example, and there wasn't a lot of crossover. But this looks like they're talking about a lot of crossover there. Last paragraph. The hunt itself uh, may have its quarry a wide variety of monsters around whom interested, interesting hunters' uh, stories can be told. Players will find some unique twists on familiar archetypes, but a variety of nightmare strangeness that don't fit any cat classic category. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you're going to see a lot of uh, classic stuff, uh, stuff that's familiar, but um, uh, to, keep it, to keep you on your toes, a uh, storyteller probably should pull out of the bag of tricks some uh things either the players aren't familiar with or are original the onus is on the hunters to do their research and preparation uh, therefore to make the world a safer and hopefully better place hope um especially when it says uh desperation and despair are the negative traits in this game i would say hope is probably the the, the theme i would garner from this game overall uh, there, it's a world of darkness. You're the last light there is. Uh, the art in this is fantastic. Um, I like the wolf on the van. That's a nice touch. Uh, werewolf, we'll be seeing some of this later. I, list, I like this depiction of um, a hunter in a wheelchair. I imagine that a lot of hunters end up injured uh, just from the course of the job, even if they uh, don't have any prior disabilities. Uh, I mean, fighting vampires and werewolves, you're going to uh, break limbs, be inflicted by things. Uh, you might lose an eye or, you know, um, even if you don't have a permanent disability, uh, uh, if you get beat up, um, I'd imagine a lot of hunters uh, get familiar with wheelchairs <laughs> when, when they survive, of course. Uh, this is the first um, snippet that I haven't reviewed yet. The Hunter's Journey talks about what makes a hunter. I'm not going to read this whole thing, um, but it talks about drives, what a drive is. Uh, like here's an example. It says my drive is... Uh, they want it, The hunter themselves wouldn't say my drive is redemption, but the player might say that. The hunter would say like um, they're, that they're driven to seek redemption, whatever that means to them. So it's it's more narrative 
it's not uh, the the mechanic terms are not going to be used by the players as standard in role-playing games or sorry aren't going to be used by the characters um here the, uh this is the first place that i saw them uh talk about faithful hunters that's the the last creed um but uh outstar already talked about faithful hunters on the mood board section which we'll look at in a se second um there's uh five creeds um they've all been revealed uh i will yeah they're talking more about drives um this part's talking about the costs of hunting um how they gotta fight fire with fire, what could go wrong, they could die. Um, and then it has some of this flavor text here. It has the uh, AITA uh, post asking if you know his his uh, friend, which it, if you read through this it, to me, it sounds like a werewolf. Let me know if you think it might be something else that his friend uh, who uh, tears his clothes off and has scratches on his face and you find a bunch of dead chickens in the yard. I mean, that could be anything they were just talking about in the the last uh, blog there that you know uh, these creatures might be something you're not familiar with um, so uh, throw out ideas if you don't think he's a werewolf but however the next um, preview is werewolves what do you know <laughs> um, here it gives some basic traits to a werewolf they shapeshift they're vulnerable to fire and silver but they can regenerate the fire um, I'm noticing here that it's got numbers it says like vulnerability silver one um, I'm wondering if that's going to be a mechanic in the book for like it's that'll uh, this probably will uh, Hunter will probably have a bigger bigger bestiary than V5 did because uh, vampires a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the themes of the games are like politicking um, and discussing stuff with the other factions. Vampires are monsters themselves. They don't need they don't need monsters to have an interesting vampire game. But hunters, um, sure you can have hunters hunting each other, but that'd be kind of. Um, that mean more like serial killers versus hunters or something uh although the it sounds like the orgs are hunting some of the hunters sometimes maybe they're just getting in their way or maybe they're uh seeing their edges as supernatural abilities uh we'll preview some of that in a minute um they, they, they've sort of let us know what some of the edges are via the uh the actual play on the renegade page um uh terrify eight that's going to be a very powerful uh terrify now in, in prior editions of werewolf they uh, have the delirium so i'd imagine that that is going to be something similar there's also two sample werewolves in here there's splinter fang who uh, as a summary is a werewolf that just lives in a certain area um and he doesn't like in texas and he doesn't like people encroaching on his on his land and, he, and he'll fight them off if they do um but leave him alone you'll be fine and uh, there's some story hooks of how you can use that um and uh, actually particularly good story hooks I, I would love to throw one of these into one of my chronicles um, and then there's a second werewolf here named footpad oh something I should mention here is uh, they've got really high stats I mean who would have thought right <laughs> of course they've got high stats but uh, they both have brawl 12 which is a particularly high number for this game um, usually uh, uh, most things cap out at 10 but uh, you know adding claws and adding form bonuses and stuff yeah 12 I'd, I'd imagine you know werewolves probably could get much higher than that too if they're really high and then, you, then you've got footpad here is the second sample werewolf uh who's described as oh there's some beautiful uh narrative uh writing here um uh he says he, he looks a little bit like that superhero you know the one with the cool claws and the funny haircut ben vereen whatever acts like him too uh because you know that that uh, the person narrating this um, is obviously referring to Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, um, and he's uh, uh, that already puts the reader in the state of like, oh, you know, I'll probably know who Wolverine is, and then I can just you know, as shorthand, understand what this character is a, a lot like. Um, uh, but also, it does it kind of sneakily because he doesn't just say like this character is Wolverine. It, it's it's this narrative where he's like, eh, I don't know, he just reminds me of this guy. Um, however, this guy's definitely not Wolverine. He's definitely not Hugh Jackman. Um, he is what I think uh, the the former parlance for this is a Ronin. He's been cast out by the other werewolves, um, and he does his own thing. And sometimes he likes to follow hunters around and help them kill vampires because he was going to kill the vampires anyway. And sometimes he kills the hunters too. 
Um, but, you know, not if he likes them. Uh, and that's just kind of a call he makes. There's a lot of details on, on that in here. Um, how to use him as a story hook as well. Oh, his real name is Russell Sharp. Uh, so it is not Hugh Jackman. Uh, confirmed. Um, I like this detail. Um, I like what they're doing here with uh, like a general stats block for like everything of that type, but also allowing it for uh, just like standard character creation for an, uh, an SPC. Um, and giving sample versions of that makes it pretty easy and quick for storytellers to implement this in their chronicles. Um, and let's move on from werewolves to creeds. Uh, Outstar revealed this um, in the last World of Darkness news. Uh, there are, oh, I'm sort of covering up one here. Let me see if I go down a little bit. There we go. Hunter creeds, entrepreneurial, faithful, inquisitive, martial, and underground. Um, uh, Marshall is probably the simplest to explain. Uh, they fight, they learn to fight, they, they hit things hard, they blow them up. Uh, <laughs> that's their style. Um, uh, underground's pretty easy to explain. That's, you know, like laying low, um, uh, smuggling things through, being stealthy, uh, 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 underground, like markets and that kind of thing. Um, inquisitive, that's the person that likes to research, um, will figure out how to fight this monster by reading, studying, uh, whatever else they have to do. Um, faithful is the new reveal. Uh, that one is uh, pretty easy to explain too. That's like the faith-based hunters um, who believe it is their, uh, from whatever faith they have, uh, whether it's like God or Gaia or anything else, uh, their ancestors, um, they will do the right thing to destroy these negative creatures in the world, the vampires, the werewolves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then there's entrepreneurial, which I find the hardest to explain. It's the one that's trying to find new ways of doing things, but at the same time, like, like a business, which I think is kind of an odd concept. I probably would have went a different direction, but I can't quite judge it yet until I actually get my hands on the book and read the write up there. It just doesn't seem to fit for me that the hunter type would be entrepreneurial. It's like capitalist hunters or, <laughs> um, I, I like the idea of, of like trying to figure out how to do new things. Um, um, but it, I, I, I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around the archetype there. Um, hopefully they can succinctly discuss that when the book releases really soon. Um, now that I've talked about creeds and we're sort of understood of how drives work, um, what desperation is, just vaguely understanding, not thoroughly. We won't know that until the book comes out. Um, let's talk about the day shift, specifically the day shift characters. Uh, let me go here. Um, the day shift is a uh, Twitch uh, actual play every Wednesday at 6.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time on uh, twitch.tv. Uh, slash play renegade um it's a good show i love it uh diana d'amico is the storyteller um she's a fantastic storyteller um and everyone in the show is amazing um it is on, i would say on the slower side of a narrative they're, they're they're going through through very carefully um so far the only thing that they've really fought after two episodes is uh no three episodes sorry um or, or truly defeated was that elevator door they have talked to like there have been vampires and werewolves and orcs involved i mean lots of details lots of stuff um uh but the the elevator door just tickled me pink uh the fact that they had to defeat that creature um let's look at these released character sheets this is what i'm really interested in at the moment um to see how this works and i'm not sure that i understand it any better than before i've seen them filled out by players <laughs> Um, maybe a little bit. Um, for here it says Drive is... Uh, th th let's review Professor Diego Dominguez first. Um, he filled out both his concept and creed the same as Inquisitive. Uh, Barry also did the same thing with... He put it, his creed and concept as underground. I'm not sure they understand what a concept is. This guy's a professor, so concept might be like university professor. You know, like that. that's... You know, like what, what's your character doing? What, what, who are they? What are they about? Like, how would I describe them in worlds using, like, one or two words? Um, but his creed is inqu inquisitive. That's a very um, uh, attractive creed. I, th I, I think that's one that I would like to play, the one who researches and studies. 
Um, his ambition is the knowledge bridge. I'm not quite sure what that is. He might have explained it in the uh, in game, uh, but I missed it if he did. Um, his desire is to be accepted by a supernatural entity. That's probably why he was telling the werewolf a uh, spoiler. Sorry, uh, no, I won't spoil. Sorry, yeah, I, I'll just won't spoil. He he was talking to a werewolf. That's that's all I'll spoil. Uh, spoiled since I already said that. Um, but that's interesting that he wants to be accepted. Like, I don't know what that means, though. Accepted, like... That sounds like he wants to be owned by a supernatural creature. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe he'll explain that uh, as the story goes on. It says his drive is envy. I'm not sure what that means either, but it also looks... I don't know if that's just in the book, is envy is a drive. Um, uh, Barry says that he wants to become them. So I'm wondering if that means, like, he's trying to get into the supernatural world, become a supernatural creature. Um... Uh, but I, I can't explain what envy is otherwise. Um, nobody has the redemption filled out. Uh, that's something I was very, very curious about. Um, allegedly, they have more information than I do, but they, they did not fill out redemption. I think this is something that's kind of important here. Um, and what that looks like. It looks like they got um, normal stats here. Um, uh, they roll real dice on the show, so you just hear them roll and you... You, you, you trust that they've uh, got the right number of successes and stuff like that and can I, that's not interactable but I think these are that's interesting some of these are interactable but this particular one cores is not core is entrepreneurial uh, maybe core can explain what an entrepreneurial one does uh, what's cores ambition it says here to become a top event planner in the south okay that tracks with what's been going on uh, in game um, and I'll look at Angelique's, oh wow, there's a lot of writing up here, so it makes it very small. Concept, club owner with supernatural sensitivity, carry on her ambition, carry on her grandmother's legacy, creed. Oh, what happened here? That's not her creed. Let me refresh the page, maybe the, the creed will show up properly. Oh, inquisitive, it put it up here somehow. I don't, did I do that? I don't think I did that. Um, club owner of supernatural sensitivity again, but she's uh, an inquisitive desire. Uh, I, I swear it wasn't like that earlier. Um, Blue Bayou being more popular than, than, than La Palabra. Oh, that's right. The, that's the other club. Um, her drive is uh, oath to a grandmother on her deathhead. That drive is drastically different than the other ones um core has atonement as the drive uh this is a very descriptive um uh sorry <laughs> i had an alarm going off there um that alarm was by the way was actually related to uh uh, the World of Darkness. I am trying to win the uh, Vampire Swan Song PS5, and it is now nighttime, so I can try to apply for it. Uh, look that up online. Um, I might include a link below if I remember. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, where was I? That really threw me off. Uh, Oath to Grandmother on her deathbed. How would I say that in one or two words? Um, uh, I don't know. Um honor there we go honor one word boom uh if that's what it's supposed to be if it's supposed to be a like specific task then uh maybe these guys got it wrong i don't know or maybe it's just open for any interpretation um i mean most world of darkness games there's the golden rule you can do what you want you can play however you want uh speaking of playing however you want all of them every single player here did their edges and perks differently so i don't know which is the preferred by the creator of the game's method. Um, and I was confused by this when I first saw the character sheet because it's just like, it's columns and rows and they were blank. And it's like, are you supposed to put edges here or edges here and perks coming off of them or down or you just list them? I'm not sure. But if you notice, uh, for example, uh, core here, uh, put them just straight down the line, edge, edge, perk, and I think frugal i'm not sure um i think that's an improvised gear perk um beast whisperer hades is her cat so i've seen her in the show talk to her cat um 
and she's improvised gear to gain some huge bonuses. Um, I'm not sure what Frugal does, but it's listed, as I said, straight down, uh, whereas uh, Professor Diego here has Library. Library, again, I don't know if that means he has it twice or if it's like a more advanced library. And these seem descriptive, so I'm wondering if the library edge has perks or um, it says where uh, where they hide and who they are. Um, those are things I would imagine you would want to research. So let's say um, you're up against a vampire. Uh, maybe since he has the where they hide, uh, he can figure out what Haven is or Elysium or whatever. Um, and who they are, um, you'll be like, oh, there's these pale creatures, and they leave behind, like, drained victims, and you'll be like, oh, definitely a trooper copper. No, 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 I'll use my library, I'll read this. Uh, yeah, 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 it's a vampire, okay. Um, and provides gear, and this one's done even differently, it's like in an L. Uh, drone jockey and armaments, I'd imagine that this is the edge and the perk. Um, and then you have... Uh, global access, um, which I think is like a hacking edge I've seen him use in the show. Um, there's been some research. I've seen the drone fly around. They've done global access. I think global access was used to hack the elevator. Spoiler. Um, and the, uh, and Angelique. Uh, this this character arc is very interesting because it has to do with the grandmother passing down her um, this like familial ability to sense the unnatural, and she puts sense the unnatural, sense the unnatural. So it says precision, hands free. I don't know if this is a edge called precision and a perk called hands free, or if these are both perks of sense the unnatural. Um, that would make sense. The latter there. If precision is the sense of natural, so, so she can precisely sense them um, and do it without touching. So she doesn't, uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, the other ones only had three entries. Well, except for library, library. Uh, but I don't know what that's about either. Um, I'm not, I'm honestly not judging the way you do your character sheets. It's just I'm trying to figure out information here. So the fact that they're all different makes that difficult. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate that you uh, uh, let them uh, be publicly available, um, every uh, the four of you <laughs> uh, who, who have played uh, the day shift. Um, this next section, touchstones, creeds, creed fields. I'm still not sure what creed fields are touchstones that is in vampire and i imagine that it's very very similar to vampire um obviously there's no association with humanity but there is human association with um a despair and desperation these people help get you out of that hole um the professor has a, a rival professor which yeah you know that can keep him going you know uh, uh he has to prove him wrong right um uh, uh there's the ta I'm not sure what the TA is doing with the professor, but, you know, they're, they're around. And the librarian, the professor is quite often in the library, so I'd imagine there's a strong relationship there. Um, uh, advantages and flaws, these look similar to Vampire. Uh, obviously, lozenge dependency is a, a drug thing, um, I believe. So it's an addiction. Um, his creed field it says professor that seems like just your job I don't know if that's what creed field is um, this is just their creed so this creed field probably should go in the concept spot maybe it's supposed to also be a creed field I don't know um, entrepreneurial that's just the creed I don't think that you're just supposed to write your creed again in there maybe Again, I have no information, but that just doesn't seem right to have a giant block after you already have a block right here. Um, touchstones. Not a human. An all-black main goon named Hades. Uh, yeah, Hades is fantastic. Um, I'm not sure on the legitimacy of using your own animal, basically familiar, I, I don't think they call it familiar, your pet uh, companion. Um, as a touchstone, but, you know, like, why not? I'd allow it if a player really wanted it to do it. Um, Anise, 
uh yeah family is really good for touchstones especially since you're human you don't have to like disown them right away necessarily i mean it's probably uh, uh good to keep their distance because you could get in a lot of like legal trouble for doing your hunting but um sister and husband his sister's husband and cfo um warren williams close friends drinking buddy i haven't seen any of these people in the game so far maybe i missed something um in a session but that I'd imagine that I would probably try to center my games around my Hunter's Touchstones. Make it feel very real to the player. These other characters that you've um, created um, can be involved, can be hurt, and it gives you like a real reason to, like, wow, I need to hunt these monsters, or uh, <laughs> my uh, family's dead. Yikes. Um, yeah. Uh, best friend, uh, or your best friend, or your best friend is dead. Um, dark Secret fame one dark secret flaw uh, i wonder what the dark secret is will we find out will we find out core's dark secret you gotta tune in to see uh equipment oh lots of equipment's filled out here half bag cigarettes that's important to note um holographic bob what oh distinguishing features i see yeah that that's cool that she filled that out he didn't. What else do we got here? Flaw person of interest. Oh, criminal. Criminal. This is Barry Sark. Baby Shark. Uh, touchstones. Mother. Former co-worker. Nothing in the Creed field. Um, so he's uh, involved in something criminal somehow. Middling height and weight. Nondescript man. <laughs> uh, fairly, fairly bland man that blends into the background. Yep, yep, yep. He's underground, isn't he? Yep. He's dedicated to it so much that he made it his concept. Baby shark, you cannot find this hacker uh, flying around with a drone. And uh, that last uh, alarm means that it's almost time for me to go. Um, but before I do, let's see if there's anything here on the end. Uh, this last character, Angelique. Um... Oh, she's beautiful. I mean, the the player is beautiful. All the players are beautiful. So they all should have that, that merit. Um, let's see here. Mentor, grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that tracks with her character. Um, glad to know she's still alive. Stalker flaw. Disliked Alija. Who's that? Is Alija head of security? All right, I don't think we've really seen many of these characters, at least not in a lot of play. Uh, okay, Creedfield's filled out here. It's a whole sentence. Getting information while on the hunt, such as research, breaking, and, oh, the and, entering, and interrogation. Desperation dice fields. Okay. All right, so, so is Creedfield's for your desperation dice? Is that what we're learning here? Because desperation dice can be added for some uh, uh, bonus bonuses of some sort that I'm not quite clear on yet. Um, so when she's grading information, because um, she is inquisitive, right? Yeah. So 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 maybe you get to gain fields. So certain things that uh, apply to your creed that give you desperation dice. Yeah, I think I mentioned heard that mentioned during the during the the game. All right. Um, and I think that covers it all. It Indeed it does. Um, please check out Hunter the Reckoning, The Day Shift, on Twitch TV slash Play Renegade. My name's David Tavares. Uh, this is my virtual avatar. Actually, you know what? I animated something here. Let me show you. This is my virtual avatar. Hello! I can wave. I'll be... Uh, updating this more as I go, uh, making sure that this virtual avatar can be more human and I can be a, a real VTuber. This is something I've put together myself in Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> uh, this is a metahuman, by the way. Uh, yeah, I am trying to say goodbye, but I'm giving you extra details. Um, well, have good luck on the hunt and goodbye.